Hey, if you are considering taking a portable building and then converting it into your very own do-it-yourself tiny home project, then this is a video I highly encourage you to watch. Today I'm going to talk to you about the things you need to look for inside your portable building to determine whether it will make a suitable building for you for your do-it-yourself tiny home project. So I'm going to turn the camera around and show you around inside a portable building and tell you the things you need to be looking for while you're shopping around looking for a portable building. So hang on just a second. Here we are inside of a really large building. This one's a 16 by 40. And I want to start off by telling you the first thing you need to look for. As you walk inside the building, you need to look at the walls. So let's pay attention there. We're going to start with the walls. Then I want to talk to you about the floors. And then I want to talk to you about the ceiling. But number one, let's look at the walls. You should look for plywood in the walls. Um, a lot of portable building companies don't use plywood in their walls and they don't use plywood in their floors. And that is fine if you're going to build a chicken coop or if you want to just store your lawnmower or some garden tools. Okay, But you're talking about a do-it-yourself tiny home project. In that case, you need to see plywood right here and you need to see plywood right there. And I would ask the question, how thick is this plywood? Because I would recommend nothing smaller than 5 eighths inch thick, okay? 5 eighths inch and 5 eighths inch down here. If it's thinner than that, uh, just keep that in mind and shop around a little bit and find out what else is out there. 5 eighths is what I would look for in both spots and it needs to be plywood and it should be treated, of course, and that, that goes without saying that all of the lumber that you're looking at should be a treated lumber, okay? Next, let's look at the, the bones of the wall, the two by fours that make up the wall. All right, you should look for two by fours that are 16 inches apart. I would ask the question, how far apart are those two by fours? Or bring your tape measure with you and measure it out. It needs to be 16. Why? That's how you would build a house. If you looked at a home, all of the two by fours in the walls are 16 inches. They call it 16 inches on center. You need to look for that. In fact, here's what you need to know. When you stand back and look at a wall, the more two by fours you see, the stronger the wall is. So when they space them out further than 16 inches apart, they're trying to get by with using less two by fours, which saves them money as a manufacturer. All right, but it's not what you need to be looking for. You need to find them 16 inches apart. In fact, uh, in our company, uh, I sell Graceland portable buildings. They double up the two by fours every four feet. So that means even more two by fours in the walls. The more two by fours in your walls, the stronger the wall. That's the bottom line. So then look at how the windows are framed up. You should see at least double two by fours on the left and right sides of your windows. And then you should look for the window header up above. It needs to look something like this. You know, this one I hope you're noticing is triple two by fours. And then down there, that one's quadruple two by fours. And this one is triple on this side. That is a well framed up window. You should look for a window that's framed up well. Same thing for your doors. Okay, you should at least see double two by fours on the sides of your doors. Look at the header up above it. Pay attention to that, and then look at your side of the doors again. You need to see at least double two by fours. Why is this important to you? This is a portable building. It's going to be shipped to you coming down the highway. That means there could be some movement and some shifting of in the building itself. The strong window frames and door frames help those things to stay straight and square. So once the building's on your property and leveled, uh, then the doors and windows should open and shut properly. If they've been framed up very, very well, uh, they will. Uh, and if, if they don't open and shut properly, if they've been well framed, it's a simple adjustment to make it work. If it's not been well framed, it may be a lot of work, more headache and hassle than you were counting on. So pay attention to how the walls are built, how the windows are framed, and how the doors are framed. That's super important. The next thing I would ask you to look at is, or ask this question of your portable building dealer, what is the grade of lumber that's being used for my two by fours? Is it a premium grade lumber or is it something that's uh, a lower quality lumber? I would look for premium grade lumber. That's gonna cost the manufacturer more money to use to build with it, but it means for you a better building in the long run. And if this is a do-it-yourself tiny home, this is where you should not skimp out on price and quality. You need to get the good quality stuff if you want good bones for your building to last you a lifetime, okay? All right, so that's enough on the walls. Next, let's look at the floors. Again, I already stated, I stated that you need 5 8 inch plywood. If you don't have that, I would say just walk away from that. It's not the building for you for a tiny home, 
okay? It may be a great building for a chicken coop. It's not a tiny home. All right, 5 8 inch plywood should be in the, the floors. And you should ask this question, how is that? How are all these pieces of plywood put together? Do they just lay them down and then screw them down or nail them? Or do they use tongue and groove to interlock the plywood slabs together? We use tongue and groove, and that's what I would expect you to look for in your building. If they don't use tongue and groove to interlock all these pieces together, what that means is years down the road, they're going to start to pull up. And who knows how many of them may do that. But when they put them together with tongue and groove, that won't happen. That's like you would build in a home. So once again, another thing you need to look for and ask about is how are these plywood slabs uh, uh, put together? How are they fit together? Do they use tongue and groove? The answer is yes, then you're good. The answer is no, thumbs down, walk away. Because it's going to be trouble for you years down the road. So don't be lured by a low price. If they're not following these quality standards, you're going to pay that price later on and you will not be happy about it, okay? It's gonna cost you a lot of money. Think about it, if that starts happening five years down the road, you've already moved in, you've already put down your carpet or whatever you're gonna put on the floors, you got your furniture and, and kitchen and, and all that stuff is in there, and now you're having issues with that floor. Now what are you gonna do? Don't skimp on this quality thing uh, up front. Get the quality bones for your building and then you have a great tiny home project to start on, all right? So underneath the floors, next thing we need to talk about is your subfloor. Um, you should be looking for, well, you can't, you can't see it usually unless they let you look underneath the building. If they've got one up on some concrete blocks, you might look underneath. You're gonna have to ask, what are the, the pieces that they're using underneath that floor? Are they using two by fours? If the answer is yes, walk away. Because in a floor, you don't want two by fours. You need two by sixes down there. If they're not using two by sixes, this is not a good tiny home building. It may be fine for a chicken coop, but not your tiny home, okay? Walk away. They need to tell you that they're using two by sixes and they should be, just like the wall studs, they should be 16 inches apart. Anything further apart than that and anything smaller than a two by six, you're done, walk away. You're not gonna get that building, okay? Last underneath that, underneath those uh, two by six floor joists are the runners. Uh, they, they run the entire length of the building. You might call them the skids. They're the, they're the thing that touches the ground when they bring the building out to you. All right, they're gonna be four by six in, in size. That's a cutaway of one. It should be a four by six runner and there should be probably at least four of them underneath the building. They run the entire length of the building and the floor joists are attached to that four by six runner. That's actually like the foundation of your building. How do they attach the, the two by six floor joists to that runner? That's the question you should ask. In our particular company with Graceland Portland Buildings, I'm gonna lay it down sideways so you can see, they notch it out one inch deep and they do that every 16 inches all the way down that long runner. And our floor joists sit down inside that notch and we hold them together using a metal uh, Simpson clip or, or hurricane type clip, metal clip. So that's a well-built foundation for your building. A lot of the other companies don't notch them out because that saves them time and they just put the floor joists right on top of the, the runner, which depending on how they mount that, it could be okay, but it's not as good as this. When it's been notched out, the floor joist sits inside the runner. It makes a huge difference. And again, I can't stress to you enough how important that is for the foundation of your building. When you start with a good strong foundation and then, then good bones all throughout the inside, you have the makings of a great do-it-yourself tiny home. Anything less than this, and I promise you, you will be unhappy years down the road and you'll wish you'd paid attention to what I just told you. Now let's take a look up in the ceilings. At the top of the walls, you should see at least double two by fours. That should be there. And then you should see metal hurricane clips that attach your roof trusses to those walls. Metal hurricane clips. So look at that and then look at the roof trusses and see, are these well made? Are they two by fours? They better be two by fours. Sometimes people use smaller pieces of wood. Uh, don't get that. That means a roof that's weak. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to look at. How is that roof attached to the top of those walls? And are those walls double two by fours? Okay, next, let's take a look at the roof structure itself. This particular building has a, um, a radiant barrier applied onto the roof decking. 
But what I want you to look for is not, not the radiant barrier just yet. I want you to pay attention. Well, you can see a little bit of it is peeled away. That's a roof decking that's gone all the way across, all right? So these are slabs like your, like your plywood slabs for your floor. These are roof decking slabs that go all the way across. And then the metal roof is applied on top of that on the outside. Pay attention because a lot of portable building companies don't use roof decking. They just put the metal roof right on top of there with little, and they screw it down to little slabs or strips of wood. That is a weak building, a weak roof. Don't get that. You want one that's using a uh, decking that goes all the way across and then the metal is fastened to that decking. All right, that's super duper important. Then what you would ask for is do they offer a radiant barrier in the roof? We do. Our radiant barrier, uh, well all radiant barriers are designed to reflect out 97% of the sun's radiant heat. Uh, if you were going to build your own home from scratch, you would put a radiant barrier up in the up in the roof. That would be standard. Uh, it is an available upgrade for most portable building manufacturers, but not all of them. So I would ask, do you offer a radiant barrier? I would ask that. And you don't have to ask, you can just look at the roof. Do you see a roof decking there or do you actually see the metal roof? If you see the metal roof from the inside, you're done, walk away. That's not the building for you, for your tiny home, okay? You need to see roof decking in there. And in this case, you have roof decking and a radiant barrier. And that's, that's the optimum way to go for it, a building you're gonna convert into a tiny home. Next, you should consider how is this building ventilated? If you're building your own home, you would have ventilation built into this um, in the ceiling, in the roof, I mean. Okay, so I'm gonna show you something up here with the camera and reach up. We have, in ours, We've got a soffit vent that runs, that's an aluminum soffit vent that runs the entire sidewall of the building. So it's all on that side and all on this side. That's for improved airflow. If you don't have some sort of soffit vent for improved airflow inside this building, um, well, let me just put it to you this way. If you were gonna build a home, you would have some soffit venting for improved airflow. That's the bottom line. Uh, next, you should look for something up in the roof. Is there some sort of roof vent? In this case, we do have a screened-in roof ridge vent that runs the entire length of the building. So those things improve airflow, because if you think about it, you're going to finish this building, your, your tiny home, by putting up some sort of a ceiling in here. Uh, usually it's drywall, sheetrock, right? But it can be whatever material you want, but you're going to cover that so that your interior is now a sealed-off space. But up above, if you've got this good ventilation going on, that's going to make a big difference in heating and cooling your building later on. Okay, so ventilation is, um, a lot of times it's kind of an afterthought, but I want you to be aware of it and think of it right now up front. So I've covered a bunch of things to look at to see if your portable building has good bones, has a good foundation for turning it into a do-it-yourself tiny home project. These are the things you should look for. There are several other items that you should consider as well, but I'm talking about just to look at this building. Would this one make a good tiny home project? And this building would indeed make a very good tiny home project. There are other things you should consider, such as the warranties that the portable building uh, manufacturer is offering to you. Um, at least a five-year warranty on workmanship, at least, okay? Uh, our company offers a seven-year warranty on workmanship. But you should look for, do they offer at least a five-year warranty? They need to offer that. Um, if they have premium lumber and it's treated lumber, do they offer any warranties on that? For example, our company offers a lifetime warranty on all of our premium treated lumber that's everywhere that you see inside of this building. So I'd ask about that, and I would also ask about what kind of warranties do they offer on the roofing. Uh, our company has a 25-year warranty on the roof. So those are all important things that you're going to need to ask about, okay? This building would make a great do-it-yourself tiny home project because it checks off all of those quality standards that I mentioned to you. All right, I hope this video has been helpful for you in determining what kind of a building you are starting with to turn your portable building into a do-it-yourself tiny home project. So I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, if you have any questions, you can hit me up where I've posted this video. Uh, you can message me. I'm on Facebook. Just uh, go to Facebook and search for Graceland of West Plains. Uh, that's my company. I have a dealership and I sell these kind of portable buildings. I'm also on Instagram. I think it's Graceland WP. I'm also on Twitter. 
Graceland WP. So you can find me on all those places as well as YouTube. And you can hit me up and ask me questions. All right, I hope that's been a helpful video for you. And uh, if you got any questions, you know what to do. Hit me up. Aloha.